Welcome everyone to another episode of this ridiculous podcast my name is dk diamantes my co-host is bricky he's gonna be hitting us with those ridiculous warhammer 40k facts in just a second but before he does if you enjoy today's episode of the adeptus ridiculous consider supporting us on patreon patreon.com slash adeptus ridiculous where you can get access to uh bloopers if they happen uh hd posters the 15 dollar tier uh this time it's lord of change but if she was a sexy waifu, um, we also have a Patreon goal at 17,000 where we will be doing uh, an episode on the Dornian heresy, that kooky, crazy fan theory where Dorn goes nuts. And uh, also, I believe we said we're going to do a Blood Angels at 17K. So I know all you Blood Angels fans want that. I want it too. So patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, tell them about all the, the just talk yeah mm -hmm. just talk yeah is that it's yeah, like just... you exhaust all your energy in the intro <laughs> it's just words man just get too many words, words. too words. many words I, i'm dumb just words yeah but yes we're holding blood angels for ransom you want Hell to blood yeah. angels have a soul we're, we're putting it down uh anywho uh the orchidate.com for merch down in the description we have all of our great little guys collection there's a ton of shirts and hoodies as well as a little guy art print that you may purchase now and also we still have some of the lord of change lady of change shit you guys make uh, that are also for sale we sell 100 of them each month whenever there's a new poster snag them if you got them because once they're gone they are gone and last but not least, our book club is on Betrayer, involving Karn, Karn. And, and Nangron, and Lorgar, and Argental, etc., etc. Yep, yep, yep. Lots of, lots of stuff it is considered one of the best Horus Heresy books, so read it or die. Damn. Imagine if we thought that, like, the Betrayer was mid. Uh, the, the community would be so mad at From us what? for... From what I've read so far, it is certainly not mid. No, yeah, so far not not mid at all. It is, uh, it's 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 yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good so far. I'm I'm pretty liking good. it. Yeah. All no right. spoilers. We we're, we'll do an episode on it. No oh, spoilers. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. DK. Yeah. Are you ready to be embarrassed? Always. Naturally. Yep. It seems that some things haven't changed since high school. Yep, that's that's just been my default mode for the last uh, however long I've been alive. Do you think you ever get numb to it? No. So, so you just learn just, to accept it, you know. Is it, is you're not really to, numb. It's just I've accepted it, you know. It's, is it learning fine. to accept it kind of getting numb to it? Well, I guess, but it, the, there's a difference between acceptance and not feeling it. I. Okay, your quote. <laughs> uh, mm. an orc can seem an alarming prospect when first encountered they stand taller than a man with hunched broad shoulders and long arms they may seem to be heavily muscled but the fact is their muscle tissue is not as dense as a human's in actuality they are considerably weaker than the average man despite what their appearance suggests oh is this that fucking guard book Hey, where it's it's full go. of all the wrong information about like how orcs aren't strong and oh tyranids yeah just bop them on the head they're no big deal it's this that stupid guard book yeah you did it Woo! yay let's go let's, let's go. go yes uh shy had a great idea um there is a a little book written by quite a few quite a few people actually um with a, a few little tidbits around here and designed and all that by the uh, 40k authors and writers and is mm -hmm. called the Inf the imperial infantryman's uplifting primer <laughs> it's it's not a lot of tidbit it's just a little No, um. fuck you, Shy. Don't you cut this out? <laughs> so, the Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer, Damocles Gulf Edition, uh, for example, was actually is out of print, but they did sell it. Actually, they did physically sell this book. I, I Shy sent me a link to it on Amazon where it says buy used, five hundred and sixty-three dollars. 
Oh! <laughs> As I'm assuming it's because it's out of print and out therefore print, rare yeah. and, you know, therefore all that kind of stuff. But um, this follows a trend that I imagine is in many real-life military books where it is extremely overly strict also very very um heavy on on random details or minute details and it has the usual one guy screwed this up so now you all need to read about how not to screw this up kind of thing even though it's common sense yeah splash that in with a decent amount of imperial propaganda <laughs> and some pretty good humor and illustrations and you've got the imperial infantryman's uplifting primer hey uh, there is a is a lot of great stuff. It's a little. There's a whole lot of actual, like, really impressive parts that make it make it up as in uh, make it feel really realistic. They have an additional foreword by Lord General Militant Huxlowns. This wow. classic, like, uh, wherever you are sent, be assured that the Emperor's holy work will be waiting for you. You will see things that few will be asked to bear to witness, and you have to face your worst fears, but face them you must. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. okay. naturally the final signature there is the immortal emperor watches over you he will judge you with unflinching eyes uh yeah gotta put the fear of god in them or gotta put the fear of the god emperor in them yeah, oh there's sure. a lot of fear of god in this book yeah I, I i i would assume so since it's it is the imperium there's there's um, a good like six pages dedicated just to punishments yeesh yes uh, but, you know, in the, let's just start it off. You have the usual, like, soldiers particulars, name, rank, serial number, sex, height, weight, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to be filled out by the attached commissar on the day of inauguration. Uh, there's also little things here like platoon commander's comments, commissar's comments, confessor's comments, if they have anything they want to say regarding the book. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a death notice next to it as well, of course, because, you know. I bet they have filled that one out quite often. Yep, there's a classic <laughs> cause of death, next of kin details, proposed route to send them back, signatures, etc. It's pretty, it's pretty in depth. They actually, this looks like it was written by someone who who genuinely gets this kind of thing, the mm -hmm. military handbook. Yeah, at least I'd definitely. say so. There's uh, there's some great art in it too. There's a great one that says it's like uh, Morta uh, Morta the day, which is like this god emperor over all these like tanks and guardsmen and skulls and shit it's pretty great damn this um, would be a cool little book to just have like as a 40k fan that'd be such a cool book to just have like sitting on your shelf and just flip through it like with all like the art and everything in it like it's it's pretty it's pretty dope it, it really is and and uh shy has here says cover to cover the only thing apart from its very existence in your hands marking it out as not an actual imperial object as the black library publishing and copyright information Printed on the second page, just underneath the Imperial copyright and publishing information. <laughs> That's really cool that they went to that much detail that it actually feels like an, an, an Imperial object. Like, it's, it, it feels like it's straight out of 40K. That's cool. That's yeah, dope. like, it really is. Like, above, it says author and illustrations and thanks, Dan Abnett, Graham McNeil, all these, like, GW authors. Yeah. Uh, but above that, it says... Things like the Imperial Infantry Men's Uplifting Primer has been written, prepared, and produced by order of the Lord General Militant of our Emperor's Glorious Imperial Guard in conjunction with the Departum Munitorum, Departum Ministratum, and Governor Cardunish of Ultima Segmentum. The benedictions of the Emperor, inspiration, source, and uplifting creeds for all infantrymen have been written, prepared, and produced by the Most Holy Order of the Munitorum in complete and direct accordance with the Most Right and Precious Imperial Creed. LMX edition, DCD, CVI, <laughs> Impression, printed by the Emperor's own press on Ultima Libris. This revised edition first published 945 M41. Let's go. It's, it's, pretty on, it's pretty on point. Hell yeah, dude. It's a shame this is out of print, because I, I I would legit buy one of these up immediately just, just to have it, because it looks like a cool little... Uh, looks like a cool little 40K object. It's actually great and, and quite hilarious. Uh, the Table of Contents has six chapters, there is principles and regulations, issued arms, attire, apparatus, and equipment, Imperial Guard organization, structure, and basic battlefield policy, Guard armor, tank recognition, affiliated and enemy variants, chapter five, the best chapter, know your foe, and then <laughs> six is elementary battlefield medical instruction. And then at the end, there's a whole bunch of benedictions for the emperor, prayers, litanies, and inspirational sources and, and speeches. 
Ah, so it's a prayer book, too. Well, I guess if you're in the Imperium, of course, your little guard handbook should have prayers for the Emperor and ways to appease him. Uh, that makes sense. Absolutely. And humorously enough, Section 1 is General Introduction of Chapter 1, and Section 2 is Rules and Regulations. And it goes for one, two, three, four full pages of punishments for various crimes. Ooh, four pages of punishments, huh? Although that's for the Imperium, that's not bad. If it's only four pages of punishments? Well, like, okay. Disrespect towards an officer. Any soldier who behaves himself with disrespect in word or action to an officer of, or anyone of higher rank will be shot. Okay, that makes sense. That seems very 40k, very Imperium. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, failure to salute an officer. Any soldier who fails to salute a passing officer or anyone of higher rank shall be flogged. Ouch, jeez, for not saluting? Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Failure to salute the image of the Emperor slash Imperial Aquila slash Regimental Colors will have their left cheek branded and court-martialed. Wow. Just I, forget well, to no. salute the Aquila. A part of me was like, man, if you forget to like salute the Aquila or the Emperor, I could see the Imperium being just like, yeah, you're dead. Fuck you. Um, cause yeah. it's the Imperium. Disobeying an order has you has you shot. Um, though there there will be other things like wasting ammunition. Who sells or willfully or through neglect waste any ammunition will be sent to a penal battalion. Huh. So this thing this things like that. Um, but then you get some of the interesting ones, the really interesting ones. Um, okay. which is, uh, like, like, sleeping on sentry duty. Any sentinel who is found sleeping upon his post or who leaves it before being relieved shall su suffer death in such a manner as deemed appropriate by the commissar. Whoa. It's like, so if you fall asleep at your post, that's just a death sentence. Basically. Wake up, guardsmen. Sleeping on guard duty. You were so close to the shift change is only five minutes away. That's number two. What do you have to say for yourself? Ah, don't even open your mouth. That's number three. Failure to salute an officer. Again, you want to talk over me. Let's call that mm, four and five. Disrespect toward an officer and disobeying an order. Yes, that sounds lovely. If it were just for the first one, there was a slim chance for forgiveness. But five? Oh, no, 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 no. The Emperor will never accept such disrespect. Mm, what was the first one? Why, a waste the ammunition, of course. One of your fellows saw you discharge your lace gun once to test it. Not only are you wasting energy, but I must question your faith. Testing your arms, have you no faith in tools provided by the Emperor? All of these violated regulations. Did you even read your infantryman's primer, guardsman? You never received a primer? Well, that won't do. I'll have to go through your files after we're done and see who failed to issue it to you. Nevertheless, ignorance is an innocence, guardsman. The Emperor's justice is the Emperor's mercy. We now return you to our regularly scheduled program. Or, like, disrespectful speech against the Emperor. Any soldiers uttering a contemptuous or disrespectful words against the immortal Emperor will be flogged, then shot. <laughs> Flogged then shot. You would think that the punishment for uh, disrespecting the emperor would be a lot harsher than just flogging and then getting killed. Like you would think that they would like, I don't know, imprison you, uh, forced labor, uh, imprisonment, death. You know, you'd think it'd be a little harsher than that because that's that's Big E. That's well the icon, right? So, disrespectful speech, I guess, could also maybe be worrisome in the sense of, like, taking his name in vain. Possibly. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, because there is one for heresy. Don't you worry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I bet. But the, the four I enjoyed the most were inflicting self-harm. Any soldier huh. who inflicts injury upon himself to be excused from activity shall be flogged, flayed, then oh. shot. Oh, Oh, damn. 
So that's if someone's like, man, I really don't want to serve. Whoops, cut off my arm. Can't serve, guys. Then they just get flogged, flayed, and shot. It's more like you shoot your foot, you break an ankle. Ah, I, I imagine the commissar is thinking to himself, you like pain so much, huh? Well, good news, friend. It's about to be a good time for you. Mm -hmm. Damn. Flogged, flayed, then shot. Damn, that sucks. There's one that's really rough, which is corresponding with or relieving the enemy. Any soldier who relieves the enemy with supplies or food or harbors or protects an enemy agent shall suffer death by starvation. Ooh. Which I would almost argue is worse. Yeah. I don't then know. It's just long and drawn out. Like if you have to, like you'd probably rather just take a bullet to the brain instead of just having this long, drawn-out, suffering starvation until you just slowly wither away. Yeah, damn. Yeah. Although the punishment should be pretty harsh because obviously they don't want you helping the enemy in any way, shape, or form because why would you? They're the enemy. Yeah, it's got to be a rough one. Yeah. Um, There is worshipping false idols. Oh, boy. <laughs> Any soldier found worshipping anything other than the Emperor or a saint of the Imperial cult will be mind-scrubbed and sent for use in the workshops of the Adeptus Mechanicus as a servitor. Yeah, this that is... sounds about right for the Imperium. Yep, it's about right for worshipping false idols. You're, you're gonna become a servitor. Yep, mind-scrubbed and, and, and then enslaved as a servitor. Yep, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> I, I love these images. Note, the disheveled Tau sympathizer... Despise him. <laughs> the yes, the disheveled Tau sympathizer. Disheveled. Despise him. Despise him. There's a whole lot of images like this in here. Um, there, there's one where it's like it's a mutant and the dude's got two faces and he's all fucked up looking. And I just love the cash of me. It's like this is the face of the mutant. Hate it. <laughs> I it like it it. It's so propaganda, and that's so, like that's the Imperium. Of course, they're propaganda. They're like a they're like a religious war state. Of, of course, it's gonna be like super propaganda sounding and like just war postery. And I, it's 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 great. I I, it, I want a copy. I want like a, I want the physical copy now. It's just they would make a lot of money if they reprinted this. Oh God, yeah. Come on, GW. We know you like money. We know you like the money. Come on, let's do Some, it. Sometimes it's not about the money, Spider-Man, but this time it's all about it's, the money. It's definitely about the money. Yeah, definitely about the money. Uh, lastly, for this one, I have heresy. Any soldier who speaks ill of the Emperor, the Imperium, cites his loyalty to any entity besides the Emperor, defaces holy artifacts or buildings, incites heretical thoughts or actions, talks openly about forbidden subjects, and generally behaves in a manner respectful to all that is holy and good, will have his extremities removed and left to bleed to death for the Emperor's pleasure. Oh. Specifically, will have his extremities removed and left to bleed to death, comma, for the Emperor's pleasure. <laughs> for the Emperor's pleasure. The body I'm... will then be burned to ensure no taint remains. Yikes. I mean, I, I would almost say that the starvation one would probably still be worse. Don't get me wrong. Losing all your extremities and then bleeding to death, very bad, very painful. Probably still a quicker option than starvation forced starvation like that's that's gonna take a while bleeding to death is gonna take after having all of your extremities removed how long would it take you to bleed to death probably not uh, that long like I, it, I, I don't know, suffer. a matter of hours def or minutes hours or yeah. minutes but you know you, you would definitely suffer but i don't know if you'd suffer as much as the starvation one yeah it'd probably just be minutes honestly and, and yeah. it would suck ass but you know you would yeah, starvation, star starvation would be like what like, days uh, actually, if if you still are given water, it'd be weeks. Oh, there's the okay. there's the rule, the big three. It's um three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. Ah, okay. Which it's isn't fully accurate, but you know it's like a, a good guideline. General, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Um, there's also finally is harboring psychers and or witches, which uh, -oh. uh, will have you whipped, have your eyes put out, and then hung until dead. Ouch. The imp and, and then. Addendum, the Emperor will have his revenge on the unclean denizens of the warp. <laughs> Damn. Having your eyes put out and then hanged. Jeez. There's a, a little addendum at the end here. It says, Battlefield justice is a separate issue from the normal Imperial policy. All officers and commissars are sanctioned to meet out Battlefield justice as they see fit at 
any time and without restriction. In, in bold, be warned. Whatever it is you decide to do, you will not escape notice. Damn. Because, you know. brother's always watching you. Yeah. Oof. So there's also a couple other things in this first section, like a training regime. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the prevalent purpose of a training regime are to promote loyalty, to instill unwavering respect, to bestow a clear understanding of your position in chain of command. And then you have like some of the more st standard military things, like um, when you are on guard duty, the cardinal rules are stay awake, stay alert, keep in mind the importance of the duty, think of the consequences of failure, remember the commissars. <laughs> Remember, commissars, they will kill you. It's like, you should obtain the following information before taking your post. Direction and probable route of approach of enemy. Sector required to watch. Number and location of your own outguard. Instructions concerning challenge. Whether patrols or other friendly troops are operating on your front. Like, there's still, like, actual advice here, you know? Yeah, sure. I wonder how often someone on guard duty or someone in the guard has actually fallen asleep on duty. Because, like, there's punishment for falling asleep at your post. They specifically say, oh, hey, stay awake. Um, though I don't know if that's just because, like, oh, yeah, this this guard has been on uh, guard watch for the last three days. And he is sleep deprived. And don't sleep, buddy. You'll die. You know, this is a, um, uh, this is an interesting or another joke that's often referred to with the guard. Often there's books like these given out to the actual military and a lot of them don't take them seriously because they're so overly strict and crap. Yeah. Um, there was a thing where it's like when you join the Imperial Guard, you get four things. A standard issue, um, uh, a standard issue M2 or whatever pattern las gun, mm -hmm. a suit of flak armor, a, a copy of the Imperial Mint Uplifting Primer, and a wheelbarrow for your 20-ton balls. Um... <laughs> The and the primer is often used as makeshift toilet paper. I do. I was at some point. I was gonna ask if this is the book that people said, "Yeah, this this book is about as useful as like toilet paper, and it's just like a way to stop the bleeding if you need something to like uh, cover your wound with." Or yeah, yeah. Because because at the end of the day, a battlefield is a battlefield. If someone falls asleep on guard duty, there might be an overzealous commissar that shoots his fucking ass. Yeah. But there's also a lot of people who are like. Hey, fuck, wake up. Like, yeah. Like, I, I don't have, you know, we don't have the men to kill you. So, you know, we'll, we'll put this on to the, to the side for now because, like, hey, maybe they'll, they'll whip you or maybe they'll send you to the prison for a little bit. But, you know, there, there's, there's a certain level of, you, yeah. Yeah. And often, if you're over, as we've seen with commissars, if you're o a little too quick to cause problems with your men, your men don't take kindly to it. Yeah. Um, and then as, they revolt and kill you. As we've seen with Katachin, who the commissars <laughs> often go missing. Yeah. I guess if you're a commissar for the Katachin, it's like, uh, you fell asleep on guard duty, huh? Ah, it's okay. It happens to the best of us. We all get a little fatigued. Just going to go ahead and let that go. No problems here. No problems here. Please don't feed me to the indigenous wildlife. Yeah, as the, as the seven foot tall Australian muscle bound dudes are staring <laughs> down at you. Yeah. Which is why good commissars don't throw their uh, men's lives away willy nilly like Gaunt or Kane. Mm hmm. Yep. 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 They respect so, their men. They try yeah. to understand them. Yeah. Like the thing is, commander. though, is at the end of the day, these are all crimes that do have punishments. So, you know, be careful. Yeah. Um, section two is arms, equipment, and accoutrements. This is actually a pretty good one. Uh, you, you, get, you are given a lot of fucking stuff. <laughs> wow, you cannot carry this, I think, on your own. Um, okay. This, wow, there is so much you are given here. So your list of attire is your classic combat fatigue, shirt, undershirt, socks mm -hmm. times four, undergarments, great coat, rain overalls, combat boots, full body flak armor, rug sack, helmet, bandolier, etc. Sure. Uh, for your weapons, you have a short pattern MG a standard lasgum, four spare power packs, Long pattern bayonet slash combat knife with a sheath, auto pistol with five spare clips and a holster, four frag grenades, range finder, and then a las gun maintenance clip, uh, kit. Which I got, I gotta be honest, it's kind of funny. Las gun maintenance kit consisting of blessed sight caliber, <laughs> sanctioned clean, sanctioned cleaning agent, 
oiling agent, bottle of sacred un uh, unguent of cleansing, bottle of sacred oil of lubrication, tin of blessed <laughs> sealing wax, and blessed soft cloth for swabbing. Because, of course, Alasgum has a machine spirit. Of course, and so, you gotta bless it. You gotta make sure the machine spirit is happy. You gotta make sure the emperor is happy, you know? I mean, yeah, way, it makes sense. Way at the bottom, way at the bottom, there are, it says, uh, common prayers for the soldier. Because it's a prayer book. And of, and there is one, which is a uh, the litany of the last gun. To be, <laughs> to be recited before firing your weapon. Bringer of death, speak your name, for you are my life and the foe's death. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they say that every time they pull the trigger, right? Oh, oh, totally. oh definitely. Oh, absolutely. Also, is it bad that when you said there was blessed lubricant, I was like, I wonder if, like, if citizens of the Imperium, before they just get a little nasty, do they need to use blessed lubricant, too? Like, Nah, dude, they have the, they have the litany of lubrication. The <laughs> litany? <laughs> There. Blessed Emperor, <laughs> Blessed Emperor, guide my penis. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, there's a reason they have the litany, the litany of protection, to oh, be hey, recited, yeah. to be mm -hmm. recited and repeated in times of peril. Mighty Emperor, spread your divine light <laughs> to protect me from the darkness. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. You think some weird 40k fans would actually recite that before? Uh, well, that's suggesting 40k fans get any, but um, damn, that was. Hey, listen, that man. was kind of savage. Holy shit! Listen, man. Right, you know, you you, you you hit in the plow. You know, things are going good. By then, you gotta roll out the litany of unloading. To, <laughs> machine spirit, forgive my actions. Soon you shall be whole again. And then, you know, after you nut, you get your post nut clarity. So you have to pray, uh, pray the prayer of relief from torment. <laughs> Although nice. my body is broken, although my blood pours away, although my time may end, <laughs> the immortal emperor will greet me and embrace me with his holy aura. If only I remain constant to him through this time of core torment. Uh, Shaz says you two need the litany of getting some bitches. Yeah, only uh. only two bitchless, uh, maidenless uh, degenerates would would find humor in such. Comedy? I mean, it's listen, comedy. Listen, listen comedy. dude. You know, you know, you can't. You know, you don't. Having kids is a problem in the Imperium. So you know, you, you you shoot it all over, all over their back, and then you got to recite the litany of cleanliness. Let my oh, hand boy. wipe the grime from your perfect form. May your purity, <laughs> may you purify with your bolts of light. Damn. <laughs> and then you don't call her back. And then you don't call her back. So you have to use the oath of vengeance. Damn. <laughs> I will destroy all of those who seek to destroy me. Why does it feel like all of this came to you very quickly? Have you been have you been have you been practicing this? Is this something you've thought about before? Oh god fucking damn it. I didn't even mm. notice the litany of penetration. <laughs> it's actually Oh, of, of holy emperor, <laughs> hear my prayer. Guide this missile, hold it true. <laughs> Let it part their steel and weak armor and crack their cowardly skin and smile the foe from, or smite the foe from your sight. Oh, it's too perfect. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Guide this missile, hold <laughs> Guide it true. Guide that missile, baby. <laughs> and crack their cowardly skin. <laughs> Fucking hell. Babe, what's wrong? You haven't recited your litany of penetration yet. <laughs> well, my lit oh, I feel right. I was just going with the litany of true striking. <laughs> oh my god. This is Blessing so of the bomb. <laughs> Woo, we're all so, right. We're all so right. lame. Oh my god. <laughs> all right. Um, so, anywho. <coughs> uh, arms and equipment, right. Um, yes, yes, arms and equipment. Yes, it is. So, so there's also things like listen tools, like a like a shovel, a hand axe, lamp pack, etc. Mm -hmm. There's a big old list of medical supplies, but it's also a ton of uh, a ton of things that are just really heavy, like four sandbags, a whole mess kit, canteen, collapsible water bag, blanket, sleep bag. You know, like you got quite a bit of stuff you, you're carrying around with you. Do you um, have four sandbags, really? You have four sandbags, yeah. Is that just for setting up, like, uh, barricades Some kind of, or something? Just like I'm, a, I'm assuming, yeah. Damn. That hey, sucks. You, 
You get a gas respirator with filter. They also have all the various parts, the las gun, how to, uh, um, you know, do the various types of, uh, do the various types of unloading and loading, how to use an auto pistol, how to strip, how to assemble. Mm -hmm. um, the gas mask has a little, little instructional guide and the various parts of it, how it can be off centered, oh, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing. There's flak armor, the helmets, various types of las guns, all that kind of stuff, you know? It's pretty classic yeah. arms and equipment. That doesn't seem too crazy. I mean, it seems like a lot of stuff, but it's nothing that's like, oh my god, the Imperium is so sick. It's just, yeah, that seems pretty standard. Yeah, and then uh, there's also in the page 31, there's a bunch of military rankings. Goes from Trooper, Corporal, Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain, Major, Lieutenant, Colonel, Colonel, Major, General, Lieutenant, General, Marshal, General, Lord, General, and then War Master. Which I thought there was actually a guy who just was the uh, War Master who decided to change his name to High Solar. I think it's High Solar Macarius because he didn't want to take the name of the Arch Trader Horus. Ah, that makes sense. Not wanting to be the War Master because the last War Master was Horus, and obviously you don't want to be associated with the biggest heretic in history, so yeah. Anywho, there's also the other various ranks and specialists. You have the Commissar, Priests. They talk about Tech Priests as well. Mm -hmm. There's a great little part here where it says Sanction Psychers, and it is very obviously a photocopied piece of paper taped over something that says kill all the fucking psychers. <laughs> um, <laughs> because <laughs> right at the bottom, it says something, something, no pity, exterminate without remorse. <laughs> so oh, yeah, Shad just posted a picture of it. Yeah, it's very obviously been over photocopied. <laughs> but <laughs> Exterminate without remorse. <laughs> Sanction, like <laughs> sanction psychers are definitely, it says, like, do not attempt to communicate if you see with them. They are under constant guard by at least three armed troopers. However, if you, if it, everyone's best interest to watch these men, if they begin to behave strangely outside of their normal strange habits, or you see them without a full guard compliment, it is your duty to shoot them down as likely they have succumbed to dark powers. Wow. All right. Yeah, that's, that's very Imperium. Yep. Uh, that's, Ogrins that's just... are after that, of course. Ratlings are after that. You know, the various types. I just love that there's that shit just taped over it, and you can just barely make out Exterminate Without Remorse. It's such a, it's such like a Starship Troopers feeling type of thing. Oh yeah, I love that. That's, that's, that's dope. Next I want is the, next section is our company structure, uh, heavy weapon squads, like map reading, compass using. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, it's like security of the column. How do you advance? Yeah, main body, rear guard, flank guard, march direction, yeah. um, scouting, movement, use of cover, uh, file, connecting file, anti air or anti aircraft security protection, anti tank security and protection. There's a whole good amount of pages that are just genuine. Like I mean, it's propaganda, but yeah, it's, but it's just like basic strategy and stuff like that. Yeah, basic strategy of things. My favorite one, though, and I know she has this picture, is on page 46, which is uh, uh, bayoneting an oncoming foe. And it's it's this it's this fucking orc. And this orc is, like, up to the to the guardsman's waist. And he looks so dumb. He's, he's just getting shanked. <laughs> <laughs> he's just getting stabbed. He's that like, is... That is indeed the dumbest looking orc I have, and, and very clearly propaganda, because that is not what the orcs look like. Um. <laughs> it's like, when bayoneting an oncoming foe, thrust firmly into the throat or chest to ensure the foe is dead. Repeat the procedure several times. <laughs> just, I, I just... love how derpy that fucking picture is. Man, if I was in the guard and I was genuinely reading this book, thinking that like there's no way the Imperium could ever lie to me, I'd go into combat pretty confident, like, oh, we're just gonna be fighting a bunch of stubby little orc dudes, and all I gotta do is stab them in the throat or the chest? Ah, this is gonna be fun. I got this. I'm, hell yeah, glory to the emperor. Which is exactly why this book is used as toilet paper, because that derpy ass fucking new, new recruit will then <laughs> talk to a veteran who's actually fought orcs and be like, brother... Don't listen to the book. Brother, don't look at the fucking book. I saw this dude rip five of my men in half. <laughs> and then eat them, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then eat them, and then he t and then half of his face was blown off by my last gun, and he kept running at me. Yeah. 
One of my buddies was eaten by the hair squig, man. The hair squig. His hair ate my buddy, man. Don't listen to the book. The, 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 the orc ripped up ten of my men, and then his hair jumped off and killed another. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those fucking squigs. It's, yeah, he's like, he got hard PTSD, as I yep. would expect from a, a fight with the warp. Oh, um, yeah, if you came back from a fight with the orcs and you survived, oh, man, the PTSD has got to be just out of this fucking world world or you're so zealous that it's like you know oh yeah yeah well the emperor saved me i've got to go back into combat to repay uh, his gratitude and his his faith in me yeah. mm -hmm. there's a uh, then there's like um warp transit things you gotta be careful when you're on a ship mm -hmm. uh there is um sanitation survival techniques there's also there's also this weird part on page 54 that says right under how to remove a leech it says, keep this space clear. Do not deface on pain of death. It's just, just an wow. empty fucking box. It's just, an empty, just a blank. You know, it's like this page is left intentionally blank. It's like mm -hmm. that, but it says, do not deface on pain of death. Wow. Why death? So if you deface that little box, they're going to kill you? Apparently. I don't Why? know. Why? <laughs> I, I bet it's just a, a joke on the, this page is left intentionally blank joke. But like <laughs> on, on pain strange. of death, yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ, it's a little so, less hardcore, but all right. So there's also oh, where is this? Uh, ah, here it is, page fifty-two. The most important thing to note: mm -hmm. sanitation in the field. Part. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, oh no no no! Don't you worry. It says part A: Do not drink from any stream unless it's been boiled. Part Fair. B: Be sure your mess kit is washed and hot, so it'll be water. Part C, wash whenever possible. Part D, try to remain as dry as possible. Part E, take good care of your feet. Take good care of your feet? If you can't march, you may be left behind. <laughs> that's, that is, that is, okay. That's, that's very, uh, that's, that's very Imperium. That's very strict, uh, military. Sure. Yeah. If you. You're just gonna get left behind. You know? they, they fucked can't... up by not saying citation by Goj Van Dyer. <laughs> I see. I see. That uh That's, that's the that's reason. For, that's that's for all the Jury Han fans, huh? Hey, hey, Jury Han. I'm alright with that one. I'm a c I'm a ca I'm a cami player myself, but you know. I see. You're a man of culture. You're a you're a cami player, huh? Alright, alright, alright. Hey. You've you've got some meta and some some good tools while also being a hot ass waifu that wears a singlet. You see, here's the thing. I don't know anything about how good Cami is. I picked Cami for the reasons you know why. I do. Cam Cami's always been pretty good. Cami's always been pretty high on the tier list. Ah, I never really know. I always thought the, the super horny people just ran into RK Mika or whatever her name was. <laughs> R Mika hasn't been relevant for a little while, actually. There's only like one Japanese player that's like really good with R Mika, but I don't know what he's up to anymore. His name is Fudo. Foot O. Damn. That, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the highbrow comedy, good, dude. <laughs> take good care in the, of your feet is part of the uh, Adeptus Sororitas uplifting primer, you know? So, oh, yeah, or, definitely. Or make sure like to keep it. Every other page is, have you washed your feet lately? Have you, have you? Sister, have you, have you cleaned, cleansed your toes? I shall help you. And then, then they record it and they put it on, on only, on only sisters. <laughs> only sisters? It's just, it's just feet picks all the way down, yeah. All right, next one. What's the, what's the next shit? So after this is a whole lot of armor, uh, mainly just different kinds of uh, like armor columns, sentinels, uh, Lehman Rust tanks, basilisks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a vehicle recognition for orc patterns and Eldar patterns as well. Um, oh, just in case there's a like if you need to know what they look like. So they talk about like the war bike or a truck which mm -hmm. is uh, to carry troops, and the Eldar patterns are known for their anti-grav vehicles. Their unknowable and heretical technology must be destroyed where it's discovered, as is a grave insult to the divine machine god that inhabits all the metal hearts of Imperial War Machines. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I thought you, you, were, you were saying that they actually had, like, Eldar uh, writing in the book, and it's like, oh, if you see these symbols on someone's, I don't know, tank, it means that it's a blah 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 tank and you should beware because it spits fire and you don't want to be lit on fire or something 
I mean, for oh no, not nothing like that for the nothing yeah. like that for enemies. For your own, yes, because they talk about the Hellhound flame tank, and you gotta be careful not to get stuck in that. Yeah. Um, but like the War Walker here that is a Eldar like walker, and it says plays a similar role in the battlefield to the lighter and faster Imperial Sentinel. The War Walker is far fucking faster. Do not be disheartened by their size. They are inferior in design and piloted by a weak-spirited alien protected by a feeble energy shield. <laughs> Ignore their attempts to target and shoot you. Their puny weapons cannot harm a well-defended position. Oh, boy. They can harm oh. a well-defended position. Oh, boy. That is some serious propaganda, man. Jeez. Now. Now. <clears throat> I gotta blow my nose. I'll be right back. Jesus Christ. Can you believe this? It's so unprofessional. Wait a minute, you're, you're keeping him blowing his nose in the episode, but you were threatening to take out the just a little guy bit that... I don't know. She said she's keeping in this bit with when you had to go uh, blow your nose, but she's taking out the little guy's bit from earlier, and I'm just oh, like, man, what the... What happened? Fuck you! All right, now we come to the best variant, the best section. Know your foe. <laughs> with all the misinformation. Let's go. So there are three... Particular races here, orcs, nids, and the Eldar, as well as the demons of the warp. Mm -hmm. So as far as it comes, there's nothing in here to, to refer to at, uh, in the Tau. There's no Tau, strangely enough. And yeah. uh, there is also no Krons. Uh, so that it should be should be noted when it comes to the, the foe that they're fighting. Because I, mm. um, at least not in the know your foe section of it. Yeah. Um, uh, though, oh, it says, uh, there's a damn, oh, Shai says it's a Damocles Gulf edition, that, and that's about Tau. Right, because that's when they first fight the Tau, right, is the Damocles Gulf? That, that makes, makes sense, yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. This one has Orcs, Eldar, and Nids, though. Uh, and then still no Krons, because Krons are, you know, not really around much. Yeah. Um, so, under Orcs, they are, obviously, I had that quote in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> it's, there's a pretty, pretty hilarious thing. Like, of all the pestilent alien races that infest our galaxy, the Orcs are the most numerous... They mass together in great war bands, and by sheer weight of numbers, they overwhelm those who stand before them. Cowards! But a man <laughs> armed with a last gun and knowledge of their physiology has nothing to fear from these abominations. They know oh. that orcs are, are slow-witted and cause no problems for properly trained infantrymen. It's, yeah, it's, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. No, 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 no. You're gonna get killed. Yep. It says, uh, this is not this, it says here, uh, that... Orcs are cowards, a tactic they often employ is to send forward waves of their smaller brother and ahead of the main advantage to soak up fire. Make Patricia's use of flame weapons as the bright light and heat terrifies these orc runts. Which actually might be true for the Gretchens. That might be true for the Gretchens, but uh, it's not gonna, not the bigger ones, not the, not the big boys. Nope. When confronting orcs in combat, remember their weaknesses and consider the facts. They are but animals, and they have no place in our galaxy where they prey only on the weak and helpless. After they've seen you with a loaded las gun and a smile on your face, you can shoot them in the back as they run away. Oh boy, that's such bad advice. <laughs> oh my god, that's such bad advice. Holy shit. If, if an orc saw a human that looked like it was itching for a fight, that would make the orc more aggressive. Mm-hmm. The war, the war boss is always the biggest and toughest orc in the band. Uh, because of its size, it'll present an easier target. A shot to the face will drop the alien scum like a sack of sand. It's like, like it's there are some, there advice. are some things, there are some things that are correct. Like their weapons are often crude and prone to misfires and jamming. And I'm like, sure. okay, that yeah, sure, that's fine. Yeah, but it. I love this. Orcs are capable of building makeshift vehicles, but be aware, variations are widespread and no standard pattern exists. The only consistency is the instability of all their transports. Further proof of the aliens' instability. <laughs> I mean, they are, they are instable. They're, they're not stable, but, I mean, there are patterns. So, I mean, come on. True. Uh, yeah. Next are the, are, the, are the Tyranids. Oh, what God. do you do when a parasite bites your flesh and sucks your blood? You swat it dead. That is what the Imperium is mobilizing to do in the Tyranid invasions. <laughs> just, like, just swat them easy, easy peasy, no problem. There are some uh, good advice here where it says there is one rule to employ when fighting the Tyranid. Shoot the big ones. It's been proven by the learned men and women of those who study the Xeno breeds that the Tyranids are sent into paroxysms of confusion if the larger controlling minds are obliterated. Which is technically true. I was going to say that's technically true. Uh, they mm -hmm. make it sound a lot easier than it actually is. Uh, but yeah, that's technically right. 
This is the, the form of the Tyranid's manifold. Some stand far taller than a man and are slow and cumbersome movers. Other fast ones are the size of dogs. But they wander harmlessly at the feet of the larger brethren, often tripping them. Yeah, I don't think that's true. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. Yeah, you're going to get fucked. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, it says their strength, such as it is, is a close uh, combat fighting. But even in that case, a tempered blade thrust firmly in between the armored plates will inca incapacitate the attacker and convince its brethren to back off. To yeah, avoid getting your uh... to avoid getting your uniform covered in alien icor, it is best to dispatch them from a distance. Wow. Yeah, I mean, because that's you know you're fighting the Tyranids. That's what you need to be worried about more than anything. Is like, man, I don't want to get blood and ichor all over my uniform. Better do this from a distance, because obviously they're no threat. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, this is why you have. This is why this is used as toilet paper, and you have the veteran teach you about shit. Right. Don't, don't, so. don't worry about their acid blood or anything like that. You know, don't worry about that shit. No, 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 no. You just, oh, yeah, it got on my uniform. Oh. Well, use the disgust that will well inside you like a fountain and turn that disgust into hatred. Hatred for the abominable form of the alien. Hatred for the atrocities they have performed in the endless quest of domination. Remember always Damn. that the Tyranid fleet should be regarded as nothing more than vermin to be eradicated from our galaxy. I mean, that is how you should view them. They, they are vermin that need to be eradicated, but it's, it's they, they make it sound so easy. And it's mm -hmm. so not, and you're crazy! Last but not least is the Eldar. <laughs> mm -hmm. It says, uh, all the major aliens in the galaxy, the en en enigmatic Eldar, are the most like the humans in physical terms. But do not let this seeming connection with us confound your judgment. The Eldar are despicable races, untrustworthy and decadent. And so far, th we're, we're on track. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, uh, all of that tracks, yeah, sure. The Eldar are sly and cunning beyond measure. This probably accounts for their longevity. It is certainly not down to any store of nobility or purity. Their appearance is bipedal, taller, and a, as a rule, slimmer than the average man. Pallid skin, sharp features, and shifty eyes that betray their untrustworthy nature. They are smooth in their movements, but their bodies are brittle and easily broken. Uh, which, which not easily broken. The Eldar can e easily 1v1 you in a fight. But, oh, sure, but you for know, the they, most part, that tracks with what you would expect from imperial propaganda you know and it's mostly on course you know it's a little exaggerated but you know nothing that's as egregious as oh yeah just shoot an orc in the face you'll be fine i uh the the second the next page 68 and 69 are particularly funny because they just rip into the eldar every image <laughs> here it just has something underneath the Eldar that, like, is yelling at them. It's like the writer particularly had a hatred against these Eldar. Because, like, on the top is their guns, and it says, The Eldar craftsmanship is inferior to our own. And then there's just a picture of an Eldar and says, The Eldar are weak and impure. The Eldar are cowards. The Eldar prefer to attack from afar. Shit Me like that. the uh, author's family might have gotten killed by a bunch of uh, Eldar. Or maybe they served and they had to fight the Eldar and they got absolutely shrecked. Oh, well, then they, they, wouldn't, they, they wouldn't be writing this, then. They would be writing, oh my fucking god, the Eldar. <laughs> yeah, true enough, true enough. Eldar warriors are cowards! <laughs> the, uh, the Eldar make prodigious use of psychers. Little is known about these mysterious and cruel individuals. Be vigilant, <laughs> have faith, meet out justice with your blessed last gun. The true weapon of a divine warrior. Ah, yes, the old flashlight gun. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a, there's a lot of little things here. It's like, Eldar defenders are those Eldar rounded up to fight. They are not natural warriors and are often mystified by the roar and confusion of battle. Treat them like errant children, for such they are. <laughs> yeah, that'll get you killed. Yep. It, it, yeah, they constantly talk about how... Killed. They constantly talk about how the Eldar may be fast, but their weapons are just really shit. Which oh. is so wrong. So wrong. <laughs> Ooh, man. Fleek, like, like, or like weak and flimsy, which they're about. I think they're an Eldar is about the same strength as a human, give or take. They're about equal. Yeah, I, I would almost think that the Eldar are a little stronger than a human, right? I don't know. Depends on how buff the human is. If it's like a catachin, no way in hell. Mm, true, true. I was guess the. I guess I always figured the Eldar kind of relied more on speed and uh, swiftness rather than just brute force strength, right? Yeah, I would imagine if you were to take like two of them and throw them in a sparring ring, it'd be like a David and Goliath thing where the, the human might be able to outpunch him, but the Eldar is faster. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. so just, the, it, you know, it, if it takes him a thousand cuts to kill you and 
you know, it only takes you one, but you can't land that one blow. Who cares? Yeah, like, I mean, like Howling Banshees and stuff fuck you up. Oh, um, man. We, I remember the Howling Banshees. It was Howling Banshees in yeah, the those were trilogy book, right? Whew, yeah. Those are tr- <laughs> those motherfuckers, man. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, like the Guardians, there's the regular Eldar, and in the same book, they died in droves. Yeah, but, that's true. And, so it, it's really like, you know, it's back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, anywho, there's also like a general considerations with uh, Zeno's threat. And then there's uh, the, the corruption of the dark forces. Talking about uh, the, the warp and chaos mm-hmm. uh, is, uh, is that kind of thing. Areas of corruption. Uh, one of my favorite things is under the medical section, there is a, a there is section four cowardice. Oh. Cowardice is an affliction of the weak and feeble-minded. It is your greatest <laughs> enemy on the battlefield, and they have symptoms of cowardice. <laughs> Feelings of weakness, fatigue, coldness and nausea, cold and clammy skin, irregular breathing, <laughs> weak pulse, whimpering and moaning, hiding or fleeing the battle. Doc, tell me what's wrong with me. What have I got? Well, you've been afflicted with cowardice. You're a coward. The clammy skin. Coward. Commissar, another this, one. Yeah, Commissar, this man has been afflicted with cowardice. Shoot like, him. By the Emperor's will, bang. It's like, wait, don't you have any pills for this? No. Then uh, then at the end of this, we have, uh, we've got all of the various inspirational speeches, which are kind oh, of fun. Okay. Um, they have all, like, a bunch of great Imperial heroes and, uh, and various other... Just, just, just inspirational speeches to read if you want to uh, to mm. learn stuff. There's like, insp- like Commissar Yarick has one of them, and uh, and just various other stuff. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. kind of fun. And then, yeah. and then there's the common prayers for the soldier, which we have uh, <laughs> we have discussed at nauseum. <laughs> at nauseum. <laughs> the the last last page of the book says like, "Eris Mort," which I believe is something high gothic. It says, war, which you will know as it will become your life, has many sounds. The whine of incoming shells, the crack of the noble las gun, the cries of the dying, and the roars of victory. You will learn these noises well. You are a soldier of the Imperial Guard, and with that, you are a symbol of the Imperium. In peaceful moments, which you will learn to treasure in their rarity, take time to think. Think of your fortune to be counted in the ranks of the blessed and feel a quiet but fierce pride in what you do. You are the backbone of the Imperium, her first line of defense. Behind you stand billions of men, women, and children, all breathing their thanks to you. You protect the hearts and homes of all rightful citizens of their of our proud empire. Feel your quiet pride and scream your allegiance so the Emperor himself hears you. Men and women of the Imperial Guard, you and what you do are the pride of humanity. Damn, that's some propaganda. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a big old commissar and a guardsman holding up this giant scroll, and right below it is a fucking servitor baby, I think. (laughs) Cherub with a bunch of skulls and swords. I am curious. Like, I I, want to know the reaction of the first... I guess guard squad that ever received a copy of this of this book, right? And they're skimming through it and like, wow, man, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be easy. This is and then their their first reaction when they're like, This book is full of shit. Uh I would love to see a book of like just the, their reaction to actually fighting orcs or tyranids or Eldar for the first time versus what they genuinely, honestly thought was truth in this little book that was given to them. You know, they got to assume the Imperium is like, oh yeah, this is from Big E. This is all truth. I I would never not believe this. Uh, I, I would love to see that first platoon fight that first orc uh, wah and just be like, oh God, <laughs> I didn't expect this. I want that. I want that story. The the uh, I would imagine it would arrive when the first gunshot of a tear and it hits your buddy, and the <laughs> living ammunition eats him alive. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Or or or, or the, the or just orc the first was, orc that you ever see because like who's enormous? Yeah, he's like eight feet. He's like eight feet taller than you. He's ripped as shit. He's got all this bulky armor and yeah. 
Or, or or when or when the fucking orc war boss rolls up and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> the emperor, his angels are here, and then the Astari just gets ripped in two by the fucking war boss. <laughs> yeah, the and war you're like, boss. Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> he just gets crushed like a fly. Oh man. And that's an Astarte? Mm -mm. Yeah, he's gonna start, he just gets like an orc war box, his power claw just snips him in two, and you're like, Ugh. <sighs> Or, or, or the or the fucking Eldar tank just like obliterates him and turns into a mist. <laughs> yeah, the book didn't say anything about this. Ugh, that would be. Oh. I, I would love just a, a, even if it's just a quick little snippet, just like a fifty-page book of this first encounter. Oh, I'd love it. Oh, propaganda. Mm. I, I find a little, I find a lot of enjoyment in old school 40s style propaganda. It's, it's very racist, but it's. Oh God. Yeah. Well, that's the point, right? Is cause yeah. you, you gotta, you gotta villainize the quote unquote enemy and, and really rally people to see them as a villain. Yeah. It's, it's extremely racist and all that, oh, but yeah. I, I have, I have a, I have a soft spot for the art style of it. Like the old Rosie, the Riveter stuff. It's uh yeah, it's, it's, I really just enjoy the, the, the art style to it and how there's a certain amount of, of, humor i take and just how like fervor it was you know oh it, it was wow wow shy that last one is yeah rough uh, yeah the, i mean they're all pretty rough but yeah that last one that shy posted is really really rough but that's how it was i mean they had uh uh back in the day they uh what was it um donald duck cartoons oh, that were extraordinarily racist propaganda, right? But that's that's wartime, right? That's what war will do, like in that crazy propaganda machine that just keeps churning it out, right? Yeah, basically, that was that was all that it was, and uh, you know, Imperium has to have this stuff in, in their uh, in their way. You have the the stubby ass orc and all of the um, the Eldar are cowards. Yep. You know, even even them. This is meant to be a guide. Like this is supposed to be the more realistic version i can't imagine what what they have back home oh yeah yeah you know like like this is this is meant to be more realistic to help the guardsmen <laughs> yeah. imagine what the exaggerated version on terra looks like yeah That's Oof. Really rough. Oof. Jeez. And, then, and then you actually fight them you're like oh my god <laughs> the howling banshees run up to you and your eardrums just burst and you can't <laughs> yeah. even think straight you just keep carved in two you probably don't even have time to notice that your eardrums have have burst because you're you've already been sliced into a million little pieces. Can you imagine what they get this book and they show up to a goddamn Necron world, and it's <laughs> yeah. just like, what are these? They, <laughs> the book doesn't say anything about this. What the fuck? What is this? <laughs> these, there's oh my god, why are there green skeletons <laughs> yeah. shooting? Oh my god, my buddy disintegrated. Ah, oh, goddamn. And, and, and then the then the Overlord is just laughing at you. Yeah, and he's just like you puny fucking human. Slice, slice, slice. <laughs> yeah, there's a guy just hiding behind a rock. Like, there's got to be something in this fucking book about these guys. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? That's Nothing. Crazy. What do I do? Know your enemy. It'll kill you. Yes, it will. Anyway, that's what I got for the infantryman's <sighs> uplifting primer. I am very happy that we could take a good three minutes to make sex jokes. Oh hell yeah. Hell yeah, that's, I mean, entertainment over accuracy, right? Although, hey, yeah. you never know, they, they you know, 40K, when they get down and dirty, they might use those, you know. You know, I'm just like, I'm just not sure if I'm, you know, really ready to, to do this right now. Ah, canticle of appeasement. Be still, <laughs> spirits, I do what I must. Forgive the intrusion and give me your trust. Also, something about the word canticle, it's like, it feels like one of those words that should be dirty. Canticle? Yeah, it just sounds like it's just, it just needs one little push. And it's like, oh, it's a dirty word. Canticle? Like, it's so close to testicle or something, like, you know? Sounds like it should be a <laughs> filthy, dirty word. It's like, oh, yeah, you got him right in the canticles. I'm sorry. <laughs> the incantation of the maimed. Okay. <laughs> and I quote, I lost a limb, but I gained faith, for I survived. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's... <laughs> God fucking damn it. What a, what a chant. Wow. That's truly, truly, Emperor be blessed. Yes. I lost a limb, but I'm alive. 
God Let's damn, go. some, some Let's of these go. are funny. <laughs> I, I, it's like, God, some of these, some of these just, they just get me. I, I, I love how dumb it is. It is very dumb, and, and that's what makes it so great. All right, well, the, the uh, good old Imperial Min's uplifting primer. GW, make it again. Please. Oh yeah, yeah. Reprint it. I like. I I literally want a copy of this ridiculous little primer just to put on my bookshelf and just display. And ah oh, man, come on, G Dub. It'll be so fun. Anyway, <sighs> this time, this time, good old, uh, good old Shy isn't gonna shoot us. No. Instead, way. we're gonna go fight orcs the Imperial way. Oh god! Please shoot me.